and Owen is the senior planner in the National Transport Authority, and he's going to talk to us about transportation and land use. So please give a nice welcome to each other. Thank you very much. Um, look, first of all, I'm just going to introduce briefly what the National Transport Authority is about, just to give you an idea of uh, you know, what its main responsibilities are and ultimately how they relate to uh, transport and land use planning in, in County Kilkenny. So we were established uh, nearly 10 years ago now at this stage and are responsible for uh, this range of functions here, transport planning and investment, the delivery uh, and uh, regulation of public transport services, both uh, public service obligation, which would be subsidised services as well as commercial services. Um, we're responsible for the national taxi regulation and provision of uh, public transport information in every aspect of ticketing. So um, this is it in more, in more detail. Um, integration obviously is a very important feature of that, the integration of public transport services, the integration of ticketing, uh, the integration of land use and transport planning generally, and how that can support the basis for uh, the provision of public transport services in both urban and, and rural areas for that matter which connect to the urban centres. So we have a capital investment function uh, you know, which is funded through the Department of Transport which involves the replacement of, uh, for example, uh, bus fleets, which involves uh, funding local authorities for various measures on the ground which support the delivery of walking, cycling and public transport infrastructure and services. So, uh, on a national policy basis, I guess this is where we take our lead from. Um, this is a policy document on the top there, which uh, was issued again, you know, around 10 years ago now at this stage, which set very ambitious targets at national level uh, to reduce uh, transport related greenhouse gas emissions below 20, 2005 levels and to reduce the car share nationally to 45% of total journeys and not to continue on a business as usual basis. Now, that's very ambitious, obviously, as far as most of us on a day-to-day -day basis use our car for one trip purpose or another. So it is a target and a very ambitious one, uh, which uh, I guess we're, we're trying to achieve in the longer term. Uh, below that you can see um, it's what's called the Strategic Investment Framework for Land Transport. It doesn't exactly clip off the tongue, but it's basically a sort of supplementary document issued by the Department of Transport, which again reiterates the high-level objectives of promoting sustainable transport alternatives where they can be achieved. So uh, this is the current uh, situation nationally, 2016. As you can see, uh, a majority of trips, a, a large majority of trips are made by, by car. Um, a significant number of trips are made on foot, but a, a very small percentage of trips are made by uh, public transport or, or cycling for that matter. And that kind of generally reflects the way our towns and cities operate uh, and it reflects the way our rural areas operate, where on a day-to-day -day basis where we become very dependent on the use of the car for all manner of journey purposes, mainly because uh, the things that we need to travel to, whether it be work or school or college or shops, uh, simply aren't close enough or connected enough from where we live. Um, this is the average daily trip purposes. Um, now, as you'd expect during the rush hour periods, the peak periods, say between 7 and 9 in the morning and 4 and 7 in the evening, the majority of trips are made up of journeys to work, school and college. Uh, but there are many, many other trips that are made during the course of the day as well, whether it be shopping or uh, visiting family or entertainment or whatever. So you can see on, on a, an overall basis, um, there are many other trip purposes which need to be accommodated as well. Um, and this is where, again, the promotion of sustainable transport alternatives comes into play where such can be provided feasibly, whether it be in urban or in rural areas. So uh, ultimately, we need uh, to reduce uh, the need to travel, we need to reduce the distance we need to travel, um, and there are a number of measures in land use policy which can support that over time. And that's really what we're talking about in this presentation here, the relationship between transport planning, the provision of services, and the land use policies which can make it po possible over time. So uh, this is a simple diagram really, it's the simple relationship between travel distance to your various destinations from home and the uh, tendency to use the car or alternative modes of transport. There's a social and economic dimension as well. If you reduce distance travelled, it reduces your travel costs, it reduces the time it takes to travel to and from work, to a college or wherever, 
and for that matter, for those who haven't access to a car, it creates a more level playing field in that everybody, or more people at least, will have more access uh, to, to more destinations and therefore more opportunities. So it has an important social and economic dimension as well. So, um, it's really through the integration of land use and transport planning, as I was saying, I'm not going to read out all of that because you, you can read it yourselves, I'll just summarise it. It's basically um, the fact that for urban generated development, um, there's an objective, and it's reflected in the National Planning Framework as well, that you consolidate urban generated development within urban centres, whether it be a large town or a city or a small town or a village, because it's in these places that you're uh, best equipped to deliver local services at the local level, which means everybody has the potential to benefit for whatever services the state has to provide and for whatever employment opportunities uh, can, you know, uh, can arise in these places, you can get to them a bit more easily. So these points here are very, I suppose, you know, urban focused, um, but they, they apply to large towns as well as small towns to a greater or lesser degree. Not everywhere can have high capacity public transport, but you can have a local bus and you can have a walkable environment uh, so children can walk to school and you can have a, a cyclable environment so you can cycle safely on the roads. And these, these are all very important contributory elements to delivering a broader range of transport options to people. So uh, it can be achieved through appropriate planning at the local level and appropriate design of our uh, our towns, and villages, and our countryside. Um, everything from the site of a stop on a rural road to the way a town centre or a city centre is designed and accessed. I mean, just to take an example of a town centre um, or a city centre, um, people need to get to it for a range of purposes, whether it be to, uh, to shop, uh, to, to go to work, or whatever. Um, they may drive, but they don't necessarily have to drive into the, <coughs> right into the centre of the town or through it. So you still need to provide a car in most places, but how you provide parking and where you provide it can have a huge bearing on the deal uh, that relates to everybody else. Can you walk into the centre? Can you walk around it safely? Is it an attractive place to do your shopping? And so on. So that's what that point on town centres is really about. Um, in terms of the layout of housing estates, for example, or employment areas, um, if you don't have the ability to walk from one to the other or to walk through it, um, this probably means that you have less ability to, to walk anywhere uh, or, or to walk to the nearest bus stop or to the nearest school or to the nearest college or, or to the nearest shop which means that you're just getting your car no matter how short the distance is because you can't walk because none of them are connected so how you design places at the local level is hugely important and over time uh, will, will have a bearing on your ability uh, even if no further infrastructure is provided to make local trips without having to get into your car now, some people may choose to get into the car, but there may be many others for various reasons who may wish not to, you know. And the issue of health, which was raised earlier, the manner in which you design urban spaces and the way you, you can provide for transport does have a bearing on, on health over time, because if it promotes more physical activity, this can have a positive bearing on health as well. So there is a health dimension there too, you know. So, uh, all of this applies to the Kenny in the South East as much as it applies anywhere. Now, just coming back briefly to the NTA's functions uh, in the broader scheme of things in, in Kilkenny. The licensing of public transport services, as I was saying, uh, the planning and delivery of bus networks and the rural transport programme. So this is what the bus network and the rail network that uh, looks like in Kilkenny and the wider South East. It looks very really comprehensive, it looks like most places are connected to one another. Um, that doesn't mean that the services are particularly frequent. And it doesn't mean that the services are particularly well connected. And it doesn't mean that where they are rooted is close enough to where people live or work for them to be able to use them. It doesn't even mean that they're frequent enough to represent an attractive alternative to the car for short distances or long distances. So in a sense, you know, it looks great, but it can be slightly misleading. So the, the, the challenge really is to deliver uh, land use planning policies and transport planning policies and services which make that network mean more than it looks on the face of it. More frequent services which are more accessible to more people so that they can use it as an alternative to the car if they so wish. Um, so in Kilkenny City, um, a study was done in the last couple of years uh, to uh, provide a new bus service. <coughs> um, 
it's, it's a city of, uh, at the moment, nearly 27,000 people, grew by 8% over, over the previous five years of 2016, so it's among the, the, the faster growing urban centres across the country at the moment. It's performing well, you might say, as a, as a city. It has 13,000 jobs, which makes it, um, you know, almost half as important in, in job total as much larger as centres like Waterford. So it's, it's an important town from an economic, from a cultural, social uh, and a demographic point of view. Um, so it needs a bus service to get people around the town and to get, to get them into the town more effectively as well. So, um, we, as part of the study, it was determined that there was a demand for a regular public transport service, which, which wasn't being met historically. Um, the Council's strategic aim is to reduce the reliance on the private car from internal travel in favour of public transport walking site uh, uh, to the extent possible, uh, and, and to, uh, to deliver that progressively over time through supportive land use policies. So, the first stage really was, was engagement with the local authority, key stakeholders and the general public. Um, the next stage, obviously, uh, was to identify the network itself, and uh, thirdly, to um, procure those services through a tendering process, such as where uh, we're at at the moment. Um, that will be the launch, and the launch of associated initiatives through the NTA's uh, Green Schools Initiative, which we, which we operate, and also the Smarter Travel Programme. And these are what are called soft measures, the things that relate to the raising of your awareness, uh, the things that can be introduced in your place of work, which make it um, more possible to consider alternatives to the car, or to use your car more effectively through car sharing with other work colleagues, for example, or, or alternatively to use the bus by providing information on where the bus actually operates, so you can make that informed decision. Um, this is what the Kenny City looks like in terms of where people live and where they work. Uh, the purple dots relate to destinations. Uh, whether it be the, re uh, the, the, the city centre where you have the retail and other employment uses, or out in the suburbs where you have uh, industrial estates as centres of employment. So the, the key to planning a bus network is to get a handle on where people are living and where they're working and the numbers who are travelling from the, uh, between where they live and where they work and what sort of patterns apply uh, across the city so you can devise a network which best fits people's travel patterns. Um, so these are just the general statistics. Apologies for the other day, 2011. It's actually 26 and a half thousand uh, as of 2016. Uh, internal trips account for uh, the majority of, of total trips within this area, which uh, means that there's obviously a strong case for a local service. Um, internal work trips amount to uh, over 6,000. Uh, internal education trips, nearly 4,000. Um, you know, typically. You're probably more likely to get more people of school age using the bus than uh, people who are travelling to work. And this is borne out in the mode split that you see there. Education trips uh, have a mode share of 6% uh, for public transport, and uh, work is, is zero. Uh, so there's a lot of ground to up there, you might say. Uh, there's no service offered to suit the working pattern, but there is for school children, in other words. Also, the tourism function of the town is very important as well for people moving around as tourists within the town to, 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 to the various uh, destinations they wish to visit. So um, this is what the Kenny City Bus Network uh, looks like, or, or will look like, on implementation. It's uh, two cross-city routes which connect in the city centre, which connect with um, um, you know, other key destinations, such as St. Luke's Hospital and various uh, employment centres on the, on the outskirts of the city as well. So the idea is to combine a number of major destinations with um, a good residential catchment that, that people can access uh, you know, uh, from the bus so that uh, it creates enough demand within the town to, to allow for, uh, for it to operate at a sufficient frequency so that it's actually attractive as an alternative to the car. And also there's a social dimension to this. It not only covers the uh, the highest density parts of the town, but it also relates to areas where you have the lowest levels of car ownership. In other words, people who are more likely to need to use a bus. So, um, the first stage of procurement is complete. Stop locations have been agreed already with uh, the Kenny County Council. Um, as part of the launch, as an incentive, uh, the lead card system, which is basically the cashless system that's in place in the <coughs> five main cities around the country, uh, will be launched in Kenny. Uh, 
his own locations uh, within the county city and leave cards will also be upset, accepted on board with a 30% discount from the cash bill, which is a financial incentive uh, to use the bus in other words. So um, finally, um, just to talk briefly about the rural transport programme, which the NTA took uh, charge of over the last couple of years. Uh, the mission statement is to provide quality nationwide community-based public transport system in rural Ireland which responds to local needs. Um, there are 17 local link offices. Um, it's, it's a combination of scheduled services and door-to-door -door services. Also covers school travel as well, uh, certain, on certain routes. And details of services are available from local link offices uh, and, and the online National Journey Planner, which you can access from the NTA website. So there are 19 services currently in operation in Kilkenny. And uh, as, as you know from recent news, uh, the local link is also being extended in scope to provide for evening services. So uh, this, uh, the, the road transport program uh, complements general scheduled bus services, whether it be private operators or public service obligation services, to cover those parts of the county and the country generally where you simply don't have enough demand to operate a normal scheduled bus service. Um, but at the same time, devising services which respond to local demand at, at low levels of demand, linking in with the schools, local villages and towns, which enables people living in, in outlying rural areas to avail of a bus service, either because they want to use it or because they don't have a car. Uh, so it has a very important social dimension as well as an economic dimension in rural areas. So um, this is, again you'll find this uh, online on the uh, NTA website. This is the current timetable for Kilkenny services. So the conclusion is um, that uh, the MTA, along with Kilkenny uh, County Council, will continue to, to work uh, to ensure that a greater level of integration is achieved between land use and transport planning, and that a greater share of people uh, in the future will have access to and can use uh, sustainable transport alternatives to the car. And again, I emphasise it's not about being anti-car, it's, it's about providing more choice to people uh, to, to make uh, a trip, and they have to make anyway, by uh, a broader range of options. So that's, that's it. So if you have any questions. Thanks very much, John. Thank you. In terms of low carbon transport, I mean, there's currently a push now to, to um, promote the use of um, you know, um, electrically powered uh, public transport uh, vehicles, so that's something which we'll be developing over time. Uh, look, obviously, in addition to the obvious environmental benefits of uh, using public transport, uh, the, net, the net effect of people being on a bus as opposed to in you know, a larger number of vehicles, uh, such, such as private cars, um, has the effect of reducing carbon emissions uh, for every you know, per journey made because buses can carry dozens of people, car may carry one or two people, you know? So um, that in itself obviously has a, an environmental benefit. <coughs> uh, again, so, Do you have data on that? Is it, is it about optimal buses or...? Um, no, it's, 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 about, it's about responding to changing technology and the fact that alternatives uh, to the internal combustion engine are becoming more feasible as time goes on. So that's something which the NTA certainly has in mind, that uh, as the agency charged with investing in, in new buses for public, uh, public service application services operated by Bus Air and Dublin Bus Air operators, <coughs> that uh, there will be a move to investing in more uh, electric vehicles over time. Technology obviously is something which changes, uh, <coughs> rendering uh, it uh, more feasible in terms of uh, the, the operating issues that arise in terms of the, the range of these vehicles. So, so what is what is the 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 it's something which will be undertaken on an incremental basis and again taking into consideration the types of vehicles that all uh, technology would be most uh, amenable to uh, 
uh, you know, it's, it's something which may change over time as well. Perhaps moving from the smaller vehicles to the larger vehicles. Again, it's not something I can give you too much detail on myself, but there certainly is an objective uh, to progressively take on board, uh, you know, uh, electrically uh, powered vehicles, or in any case, alternatives to the existing uh, you know, diesel vehicles which have been purchased or, you know, up until now. You know? Uh, again, just uh, on that note, if you look at uh, transport emissions, um, the, the public transport sector only accounts for, I have, just happen to have a figure in front of me, so I may as well quote it. Uh, it quote, it's, uh, what is it, 4.5% um, four and a half, uh, four and a half of, uh, of total uh, CO2 emissions are associated with, um, with, with bus and rail, uh, whereas at a national level it accounts for 13% uh, more share of the excluded freight. On the other hand, uh, the car uh, accounts for um, over 52% of CO2 emissions nationally. Um, the freight sector obviously is a major contributor to that as well, uh, which accounts for nearly 25%. So they're the kind of general figures. Obviously the general objective, you know, through change of technology and modal shift, is to try and reduce the overall carbon footprint of the transport sector. Certainly, you know, I think it would be great if I could find what to happen because it would be an interesting pilot to see all the tools that have been proposed. Yeah. Can I just ask a, a question on throughout this process? One of the themes has been the sustainability of towns mm -hmm. from a retail point of view, and you were talking about um, you know to try and get people into towns with facilities and then therefore reduce the <coughs> car. The problem would seem to be that most of the retail where people do a lot of their shop, i.e., big discount stores are often on the edge of, of settlements and places like, you know, small rural villages like Bally Hill don't have any retail. So to do any shopping, I live in the centre of town, but to do grocery shopping, I need to get into a car to go to the thing. How do you balance the conundrum between that transport policy and sustainability of small city centre or town centre? Is that a, well, really I mean, I think, I think retail planning policy is, is a very important uh, influencing factor, obviously. I mean, in, in the last few decades, there's been a tendency towards the suburbanisation of retail floor space, you know, in, in, in larger cities, uh, through large suburban shopping centres. In, um, in cities the size of Kilkenny, uh, that there has been a suburbanisation of retail floor space as well. Uh, it often, it can be uh, impacted by, or it can be led by the delivery of uh, relief roads or, or bypasses or ring roads, or as the case may be, which, uh, which uh, enable essentially car-based forms of retailing to be cited, convenient to uh, you know, uh, the, the emerging uh, distributor road network uh, serving the town. You know? um, I think there's always a challenge there. I mean, in, in general terms, we would support the centralization of retail floor space to, to support the basis for um, you know, the use of alternatives to the car in addition to the car. And again, not, not to sound too sort of anti-car, which, which, which I'm not trying to do, by the way, uh, you still need to make provision for, for, for the car uh, at a retail destination, uh, whether it be a town or city centre or wherever. It, it just needs to be managed uh, in balance with the needs of other modes, which, which is down to design, it's down to the siting of parking, it's down to the level of parking that's provided. But in, I think in general terms, I mean, you know, the, the more retail floor space is provided in retail parks and out of town or out of town locations, the more challenging it's going to be to, uh, to, to achieve that. And it obviously has a commercial uh, detrimental effect uh, as well, which has broader social and economic implications. I mean, in Kilkenny, there are a number of routes, uh, you know, there are uh, uh, 14 routes.
routes plus five school related routes and uh, you know, uh, most uh, settlements within the county between scheduled bus services and rural transport services would have some manner of service. Now typically the rural transport service would, would operate once in the morning and once in the, in the penal period, you know, uh, rather than being higher frequency. Um, so, but, but they do have a fairly extensive coverage. Uh, that um, information we that I referred to earlier on that sets out each of the individual routes, the places that are served by them, and the schedule of services, which as I say, in most cases will be once in the morning and once in the evening. But it is fairly extensive. It's not to say it couldn't be improved further, I hope it will be. You know.